Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the fly-by-wire settings in our lovely game Flyouts. Now this aircraft you see was the first aircraft I ever made in Flyouts. I think you can identify what it is, <laughs> but I really enjoy it because it's a great little just, it just goes. And again, as my first time out, there's no, nothing fancy about it. And I like it a lot because it does everything I need it to do. So what is fly-by-wire? Uh, fly-by-wire is basically a system whereby your control inputs or run through a computer for the purposes of basically saying, uh, what do you really intend to do with the airplane? Now, when I design things for fly-by-wire, there's a couple things you have to kind of know right off the top of your head. Uh, the first one that you have to know is the fact that the fly-by-wire settings will fight against each other if you create two conflicting needs for it. The second thing you have to know about fly-by-wire, uh, this is kind of an important concept as well, is when you're starting to play with it, uh, you're going to discover that everything is basically going to be a function of how much of a change you're making. Now, the reason I say that is uh, we have this little tiny little elevator on the back of this airplane right here, and it's uh, nothing too, too special special for us. But the reason that's important is whatever I set this elevator to is whatever percentage of the controls the fly-by-wire is going to have. Okay, that didn't make any sense. Would you explain that another way? Sure. When these values get set to a number of one, for example, you're basically saying you have 100% of the control authority for the purposes of controlling that particular input. If you set this to two, you are effectively doubling the control authority. So if I needed to adjust for half a stick deflection, I'm now doing a full stick deflection. Uh, the other translation for that too is as these numbers get bigger, you will have less control of your airplane as the fly-by-wire takes the control from you. That's a very important concept because uh, one of the things that you'll do is you'll start playing with these functions and you'll find it very, very difficult to adjust. So let's go ahead and take this airplane for a quick spin and see what we're up against. All right, they had all sorts of fun things like weather and stuff now. So I'm flying with a keyboard and I chose to fly keyboard specifically today for the purposes of basically seeing what we can do to make this plane a more stable plane. Now remember, this is a 1950s era plane. It wasn't supposed to have any special stability controls in it. So as we start to engineer some of our problems and solutions, we're gonna have to come up with ways. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get airborne. Whoa, okay. So we have positive stability and you're sitting here going, what, it just pitched up. Uh, it pitched up because I told it to pitch up. And uh, the reason I say it has positive stability, let's go ahead and bring in a little bit of trim here to kind of help us out a little bit. Rip. There we go, it's not too bad. It's because when I pull back and let go, do you notice the aircraft wants to settle back at the original position? That was actually not, that was not that positive. This is actually fairly neutral stability. I hate to say it. If I push the nose down and let go, yeah, it kind of keeps where I let go. Nice. So this is actually a very stable airplane. I'm, I'm kind of proud of that. But the key thing we need to know about that is if I don't touch the controls, my situation doesn't get worse. You know, at eight degrees uh, pitch to trim here, I'm just sailing upwards. You know, I'm not fighting and I'm not going back and forth or anything along those lines. It's very much easily just kind of climbing up here. Next thing we're interested in is what happens when I hit the roll. So when I hit roll, I can kind of get a feel for what it wants to do. I can see how much slip it's got. It has Barely any slip. Actually, it has an unnaturally low amount of slip. That's kind of weird. It's fairly responsive. Um, I don't feel like I have to like fight it. If I let go of the roll, it settles itself out pretty well. So, of course, if I get into a turn, um, I get over G, over G, over G, over G. Ha <laughs> ha! You don't have to worry about over G because I don't have a soft join on, so I don't have to worry about that component. So that's pretty good. Uh, next thing we'll do is we'll try yaw. Uh, that's pretty typical for jets, actually. That's not bad. Let's see if we can get it real bad going here. Oh yeah, let go. Let's see what it does. Whoa, that's not bad. So of course, let's do uh, uncoupled and see what happens. Uncoupled, I'm doing opposite roll to yaw. Let's see if we can get it real bad here. Oh boy, oh, I think I went upside down that time. Whoopsie daisy, whoa, ew. okay, let's get it unstable. Stall, oh, let go. Man, this is a stable airplane. This is great. <laughs> I'm actually kind of surprised how stable this is. This is probably more stable than the real one, I'm sure. But um, pretty good. But well, we definitely have some work to do. So let's go ahead and establish a couple design goals here. Uh, first things first, um, we've got to get the pitch under control. It's very difficult to fly this plane the way it is now. So well, one of the things we could do is we could either dampen the pitch by saying there's a limitation based on speed. Obviously, if you increase this, then it's less sensitive at speed. Or we could dampen the pitch rate overall. It's going to, going to try to keep it steady. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come in here and we're going to set this to a value of 1, meaning the system has 100% control authority for the purposes of dancing. dancing. That'd be fun too. Dampening my pitch. Watch what happens. Now, pitch damping is a good thing. It's basically going to stop this aircraft from being all over the place. You know, if I put it at a specific angle, hypothetically, it should more or less kind of stay at that angle. I mean, that's the objective, any pitch damping. If you fly an Airbus, for example, you're very familiar with this. Basically, you pull the stick back and it goes where it wants. So let's go ahead and pull up. 
I'm basically standing on my tail here intentionally. I'm just going to let go. Now, what do you notice here? I want to pitch up. Do you notice how, if you look over on your left-hand side, notice how, the, see how everything kind of deflects itself the opposite direction. If I pull back, do you see how it has that like kind of kickback? That's the system dampening how aggressively I'm running my pitch control here. And you can actually see if I pitch back really hard, do you see how it catches it now? And it basically smooths out that action. Now, what's interesting about this is if we go to our controls here and we dial in our you know, 13 degrees pitch up and I just kind of leave it there and let it kind of settle a little bit, which is what it's doing right now. I knew that was going to be too much pitch up at seven. I designed this thing. I know what the thing does. So now, of course, if I pull back suddenly, do you see how it just kind of sails? And if I let go, ah, see how it just chills? It, it just sort of hangs out. And um, that's a function of that pitch damping setting. Um, combined with regular trim, it gives me the ability to do things like this now. So now if I, of course, were to drop like this and I were to roll back out of it at 10 degrees, just like that, you'll notice it's going to more or less keep that way based on whatever my particular trim setting is. Now, if I pull back really aggressively, do you see how it's not letting me get carried away as far as my pitch rate, my rate of pitch? That's the important thing. Now, the reason this gets fun is if I pull myself into a turn here and I pull back aggressively, you'll notice that my aircraft's actually doing a really good job of limiting everything. It's not letting me exceed my maximum G. It's not letting me exceed my maximum angle of attack. And it's actually working really well to prevent me from pitching any more than it really should be. Now, for some people, that's plenty. Um, I don't need to increase the pitch rate at all. It's actually doing a beautiful job. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to keep it. Um, if I go to maximum angle of attack here, you'll notice 11 or 12 degrees is basically perfect. Perfection. Oh, that's about right on the edge of a stall for this particular wing shape. So that's perfect. I basically engineered this thing really well here. So I'm going to come out of my roll here and try my nice little dodge. So I'm actually really happy with that. But one of the things I'm noticing is this aircraft is having a real bad tendency with this. And yes, I'm doing this intentionally, but you probably noticed I want to keep coming out of my corners why it starts to do this kind of an action. So I think the next problem we need to solve is going to be yaw. Now, yaw is a really easy problem to solve, and usually it's a function of how large your uh, particular rudder is. But the big thing about raw yaw, and that's going to be either slip or damp. Uh, this is important because damp is going to be for the purposes of reducing how much slip our aircraft has. Rate is how fast we're changing our particular position. So you have to ask yourself, is it an issue that the aircraft is not staying straight as far as slipping and skidding, or is it that it is yawing too quickly? That is a big difference here. So what I'm going to do, of course, is I'm going to do a slip damp, and this is going to restrict the aircraft's ability to skid. Go ahead and save and fire it back up. Now you'll observe the aircraft is trying so aggressively to uh, keep me from slipping that it is making the aircraft impossible to operate on the ground. Uh, no matter how hard I kick my controls, it's basically running away on me. Now, the reason this is happening is if you actually look out the back, you'll observe that my rudder is pushing itself into the slip. Uh, this is one of those unintuitive things that I probably didn't catch the first time. So if we actually come in here and do a negative slip damp, it'll actually have the inverted effect. And now that we're starting to accelerate, you can see that we are indeed having the opposite effect in the opposite direction. So uh, one of the problems you will face with any sort of a damping of that form is as that number gets bigger, and again, I'm not touching my controls at all, by the way, you can see how overly aggressive it gets. Remember, it has 100% control authority over me right now for the purposes of uh, making sure we don't slip and skid all over the place here. But you can see that the problem just gets progressively worse as it's allowed to kind of pull itself out, which is a, one of the issues you're going to face with that kind of a system. So instead, what we really should do here is under a slip damp is we should make this much, much, much lower. We can set this as low as a 0.1. Now let's see what happens. Now, what you're observing here as I'm uh, careening towards those trees is that the slip mechanism is working correctly. But one of the things you have to remember is it is linked to your nose wheel. So one of the things you can do, of course, is you can reduce the authority of the nose wheel just for the purposes. Or, of course, you could also increase the speed of the nose wheel to make it a little bit more steady. So what we're looking at now is we're looking at how quickly the aircraft slips. And uh, that's going to be a very interesting thing for us to test here. So I'm going to go ahead and give us just a tap of trim just to make it a little bit more stable. And we're just going to kick it and let go. Now, what you want to observe here is how fast this unslips itself. Now, what you're observing here is uh, I skid, slip, and I let go. You'll notice it's um, 
not working great. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's um, doing very, very, very little here at all for the purposes of knocking out the oscillation uh, that you can actually see very clearly because of the way this is going. That's because the only thing we're doing is reducing the rate of slip. We're not reducing the rate of yaw. And uh, like I was warning a moment ago. So if I let go of my controls, you'll actually watch the plane. See how it's uh, kind of hunting right now, trying to get itself out of the skid as it's uh, desperately trying to pull that particular moment. Yeah, I know we're over G, relax. I'm not going to snap a wing off. So you can see that this does not work on its own. So what we have to do instead is we have to actually go back into it and we have to dampen. I made this negative, by the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my damping of the yaw rate. And I'm actually going to do about half control authority here. Go ahead and save real quick and go try it out. Now we're running down the runway here. And, uh, one thing we did change uh, kind of behind the scenes there is we adjusted how aggressively the aircraft is allowed to uh, make adjustments on the nose wheel to make it a little more sensitive. It's pretty good. Give it a little tug, bring up the G. There we go. Bring up the G, by the way, we first bring up the gear. Now, we a couple of things we're probably going to observe. Uh, one thing we're going to observe now is that the aircraft is actually not flying in the direction it's going. We call that wind. Uh, don't worry. It, the wind does that. Uh, the other thing we have to keep in mind, too, let me go ahead and dampen this out to be a little bit smoother for us. That looks pretty good. Is now when I kick the G, when I kick the rudder, we're expecting it to stabilize quicker. And now uh, you can see how it's slowly starting to get a little bit closer to the center. Now, if you remember one of the problems we had a minute ago is when I tipped it, see how it started hunting? And you can see that the hunting is significantly reduced here because now we are also damping ourselves in yaw as well as damping ourselves in the actual skid itself. So when I fly sideways, do you see how it's a much, much smoother? It still has a little bit of that hunting as it attempts to find, you know, the appropriate amount of skid to give us here. There's another thing you have to remember too, and that's that my elevators don't respond instantly to my actual controls. And that's how one of the kind of things that you have to remember, especially with anything that's um, fly by wires, that you have a computer that has to send a hydraulic actuator work. The other thing you can observe is as I pick up speed here, it's a much, much, much more sensitive proposition. You can see very clearly how that is a much more aggressively at keeping that exactly where we need to go. So that's pretty good for y'all. I like that. I might actually increase this authority a teeny, teeny, tiny bit because it's still being a little weak at the lower speeds. But I actually like that. That's how basically perfect for what I'm doing. This jet's getting more and more polite every time I play with it. Oh, relax. Notice, by the way, I'm not exceeding maximum angle of attack. Ah, oh, it's such a slick way to do that. Some people like to use the angle of attack limiter. I don't because it makes it very pitchy and that's not necessarily desirable either. So the last thing we're going to take a look at is roll. And um, let me go ahead and make my class second adjustment here. Um, 0 0.5, I'm actually going to come up a little bit here. That looks a little bit better. And the last one is roll. And there's a couple different ways to dampen roll. This aircraft has very little issues with roll damping because it doesn't have a propeller on it. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to introduce the concept of, if you come down here, you'll see a bunch of different bells and whistles, is we actually have an auto level pitch. I don't recommend playing with this. It's kind of it's kind of finicky. And we have an auto level roll. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a 0.25 auto roll on this. And what that's going to do is it's going to try to stabilize the aircraft back to level when I'm flying it. And we're off. Of the uh, auto anti-skid is, uh, I'm not that I'm fighting the anti-skid, but it kind of feels like I'm fighting the anti-skid because of that crosswind. Just kind of one of those things where I wish they'd change it. Oh my gosh, it's so smooth now when I take off. I love it. So the auto level tool is basically for the purposes of either making it level in pitch or making it level in roll. And we have the roll option selected right now. So I'm going to go into my controls again. I'm going to get myself, uh, what do we decide? 0 0.9, 0 0.10, something like that. Seems to be a pretty good level. And you'll notice if I go ahead and deflect the plane and I let go, I'm not touching my controls right now. The aircraft automatically re-centers itself, uh, just like you can see uh, very clearly here, which is uh, pretty handy for us. And I'll go ahead and get this up just a tiny bit there. Uh, I like that. Perfect. And that thing is basically perfect now. So if I tip it and let go, you can see it brings myself back to center, which is a beautiful tool for us, especially if we're flying like a propeller-driven airplane, where it has a very, very strong, strong tendency to torque left or right, or a P factor, or, you know, all those other fun things that make it interesting flying something with a propeller instead of a jet. So we have for ourselves a very good aircraft right now. The only thing we haven't done is establish any sort of G limits in it. And I actually don't love playing with G limits uh, because when you start playing with the G limiter, you're gonna find that things get a little messy. And again, my pitch limiter does such a good job of stopping me from exceeding my maximum rate. It's really not that big of a deal. And again, I can pull this thing into a really tight turn here and I'm only barely pulling my maximum G, pulling out of the drop there. And again, because we have such an aggressive pitch limiter here, it's basically preventing that from happening. Happening. And it's just such a smooth airplane now. This is great. Now, one of the big things I like to test uh, whenever you're doing any fly-by-wire work is how the plane lands. 
Now, the reason this is an important point is, you know, you spend 25 minutes, you get everything the way you want it, you know, you're happy, you know, everything seems to work okay, you, know, you finally tune the last couple components of this thing, and everything feels pretty good, you think you got it under control, you know, you, you pop the flaps in, obviously this thing gets really, really annoying when you put all those flaps in, which is actually very realistic. I'll go give just a little tiny bit of trim to make it stable. So you come in for your landing for the first time. You know, you're really, really excited here. You know, everything's good. Your pitch limiter is good. Everything's ready to rock. You know, you're looking at my angle of attack right now, which is uh, two and a half degrees, which is actually very, very high. Uh, we want to get that nose up significantly higher. I'm actually going to bring up the controls panel one more time. Looks good. I'm going to pitch my trim up just a little bit higher. There we go. I'm guessing my pitch, my final approach speed, I haven't actually established in this plane. I haven't written the POH on it yet, but that's okay. There we go. Just go ahead and get ourselves in a nice relax. Yes, I am landing with the wind behind me. I know, I know. There we go. That looks pretty good, actually. Give it just a couple taps of power. That's pretty good. That was a little too much, actually. Man, this thing's got quick acceleration for a 1950s uh, jet engine. Looks pretty good. And this is what we want to test. We want to test what happens when we pitch the plane up. Did you see it? Did you see it happen? Did you notice when I got close to the ground that the pitch suddenly shot? Oh! Now you're probably saying, what is the deal with that? The deal with that, of course, is your flaps. And of course, because we have an angle of attack that's limiting my pitch, you can see it creates this interesting little problem where, oh, my aircraft becomes completely uncontrollable uh, during my approach there, which is uh, one of the challenges that always exists uh, whenever you're designing anything with you know, your fly-by-wire components here, is that we have to make sure that we test our aircraft thoroughly under every condition to make sure it's not making it dangerous to get it back down to the grounds. So hopefully this encourages you to play with those settings. Uh, for those of you who are big fans of doing helicopters, fly-by-wire is the only way to do helicopters if you're using keyboard. Uh, things you gotta watch out for is a lot of people like to kind of limit their pitch rate using this rather than fitting with your G limits. You can see I do have a G limiter to six to nine Gs already preset on here, but I barely smacked into it because I already had that pitch rate kind of set in here. I usually tell people to avoid the angle of attack limit, or if you are gonna do the angle of attack limit, go like 15 or 16 degrees at the start. Don't make it like 10 degrees. Otherwise, it's going to be as it bounces off itself. And then finally, one thing that works really, really well is you can actually adjust how aggressively you would make all of your pitch changes in this aircraft. So you can make it a lot touchier. But if you make your controls touchier, all these things are going to adjust themselves together. Enjoy.